It's amazing to see all of you guys here. My name is Ellen. I'm the outreach director for the Hollywood Fringe Festival. Um, you'll see me here. You'll see me at office hours. You'll see me moderating other panels. And we're going to have a really fun year together. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you to our panels for being panelists. Not our panels. Panelists for being here. Um, thank you to Family Arts for hosting us. Thank you for hosting a mixer afterwards so we can all start drinking about Fringe. Um, it's a hashtag, you should use it. Um, thank you to the staff that is here. We have Alex, our events coordinator in the back, and Dave, our producing director who's filming for us. We have wonderful volunteers helping check in the front. And uh, I have a couple announcements before we get started. Um, we have our first town hall hosted by Fet School Director Ben Hill at the Lounge next Saturday, January 26th, from 2 to 4 p.m. That's about everything registration. If you're thinking about doing a fringe, you should go to that panel. Um, it'll, or it's a town hall. He just, well, like he basically does what we're doing right now, but from the fringe perspective, and gives you all the information you need to know, and we'll take your questions at the end about everything about registering for the fringe. It's really important. Um, but of course, if you can't go, all of our panels and workshops, town halls, all of these things are filmed and put on Fringe TV. So for those of you watching at home, hello. Um, after our town hall, we have our off-season office hours, which is just a chance for us to get to know each other, talk to each other, hang out, see our friends that we haven't seen in a million years. And that will be at the Broadwater Plunge, who is generously donating 20% of proceeds between 4 to 7 p.m. that day. Woo. To the fringe. Thank you so much. Yay! <laughs> um, our fringe mentorship um, apps for our, our fringe scholarship program. If you've done the fringe before and you would like to be involved in our fringe scholarship program, it's a great way to give back to the fringe and be a mentor for a fringe scholarship winner. Um, and those applications close on February 1st. Um, registration also begins February 1st. And if you'd like to get your information included into our guide, are due April 1st. You'll get so much information about that and more in this, as well as our uh, town hall. But if you have a brain that you want to find out all the information now, you want to be ahead of the game, you should go to support.hollywoodfringe.org, which will have all the information you would ever want to know about doing a fringe show. Um, without further ado, I would like to get our vendors involved because I'm sick of hearing my own voice. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for being here. Could I get you guys to kind of, in this first question, say your name, your venue, your involvement in your venue, which is pretty much similar to all of you, and what? how do you manage booking your venue? Um, and I'll start down at that, to surprise everyone. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Hi, everybody. I'm the, uh... Do you want the mic? Nah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, or the Hudson Theater. Um, what is the question? How do you manage booking your venue? We manage booking our venue not, it's probably going to be a little different than some of the other answers. We don't really do it that differently than we handle the rest of the year. In other words, we don't sort of change how we operate the fringe versus how we operate the rest of the year. We don't book a lot of slots, about two a night. Um, uh, not a lot of pressure to get in and get out. Um, I'm guessing, I'm not sure, that our price point might be a little higher than some of the other venues. And part of the reason is because we don't book too many slots, maybe. Um, so maybe that's the general answer. Outside of that, you know, we just respond as fast as possible. Usually we get a response within a couple of hours of email. And uh, we just like to take our time with clients and find the right fit and make everybody happy. That's enough. The, the Hudson is. That's a good question. <laughs> the Hudson is in Pasadena. <laughs> the Hudson is in Hollywood on Theater Row. It's just at the other end of the. It's on Santa Monica Boulevard, right across from the complex, right next to the, right across from the second stage. Kind of. It's where the, we have a we have two we have a restaurant we have a cafe. Eat This is the restaurant in our building. We have a new cafe. The cafe has always been there, but it's new ownership right now. It's going to be called. Bungalow 40, you're probably hearing it here first. We haven't done the press release yet. The sign isn't even outside yet. It still says Hudson Lobby Cafe. But improvements going on and lovely facility, wonderful staff. Hudson Theater. 
Uh, I'm Matt Richter from the LA LGBT Center. Uh, we are located one block east of Highland and one half a block north of Santa Monica on McCadden. Uh, my name, oh, my position, I'm the technical director, uh, and this year I'm going to be booking uh, all of the shows. We, we had somebody in previous years who was responsible for that. I've taken that over and hopefully are making it a little more egalitarian uh, instead of just booking that person's friends. <laughs> uh, the struggle is real. Um, in terms of the booking process, uh, we're interested in uh, not necessarily primarily shows that, that uh, deal with LGBTQ themes, but uh, any underrepresented group, any uh, people of color. People, uh, we're interested in telling stories that otherwise might not be told. So uh, if your show fits into that uh, theme or mold, we're especially interested in talking to you, but we're certainly not going to tell anybody don't talk to us about doing your show. So um, basically just, I guess, email me. I have cards. <laughs> Sorry, can we also, how, how big are the venues? Oh, yeah. oh. that's a good question. Right. See, All right, I'll just say. We have three spaces, two 99-seat theaters and one 43-seat theater, and I will say that the 43-seat theater is probably our primary fringe space. Uh, one of the 99-seat theaters is already booked. It's gone for June. Um, and, uh, but the other one is still certainly a possibility. Um, the 43 seat theater seems to fit really well for a lot of solo shows, a lot of two handers. Um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, the uh, LGBT Center has one venue that we're booking. It's the Davidson Valentini Theater. It's a 50 seat theater. That's it. <laughs> yeah. You had a comma. I was waiting for that. Yeah. I, I, I it was a comma. <laughs> I'm Janine Wisnowski Stalin, and I'm the managing director of the New America Theater. And we are in our second year as a fringe venue, and we are at 1312 North Wilton Place, and that is Wilton between Fountain and Sunset Boulevard, right across from the Bernstein High School. We have two venues. Our fringe venue is our Black Box Theater. It has uh, 37 fixed seats, but goes up to 44 seats. And it's a sweet little venue. We spent the you we know, were over the theater prior to last year. We just took it over, and uh, we made uh, just gorgeous improvements. We have an I think it's an adorable lobby. If I can use that word, adorable. Um, a spacious dressing room and um, uh, something that's really important to uh, renters is two bathrooms: one for the, the actors, and then also one for the for the patrons. What else? What was another question? Oh, um, if you want to rent our venue, you would uh, go onto our website, newamericantheater.com. We have pictures on there, and you can email me, Janine at newamericantheater.com, just like Janine sounds. Uh, it's J-E-A-N-N-I-N-E at newamericantheater.com. Did I answer all the questions? Yeah, you totally did. <laughs> I realized that I'm I... following the rules. You did. I realized, and you, nobody did this, but um, I realized that before we had this conversation, I forgot to set parameters. Um, for any of you who are new to the fringe, we have a fringe zone, so any venue that you would want to do your show at have to fall within these guidelines. Um, our fringe zone is between Gardner to the west, Franklin to the north, Normandy to the east, and Rosewood to the south. So anywhere, a parking lot, if you can get the proper uh, <laughs> insurance and uh, permits, great. Um, anywhere that you do within that would count as a venue, and these are just venues that typically book during a fringe. Um, another thing that I forgot to set as a parameter is during this conversation, we're not going to talk money or anything that uh, no. anything that goes <laughs> <laughs> anything around that subject. That's something that you can deal with individually. All of these wonderful venues will likely have tours, or you can go email them and talk to them about coming to see their venue. And that's when we can ask about how much it will be or things like that. But I love the idea of everybody in their introduction still talking about how you manage booking your venue, your name, what your affiliation with your theater is, and how many seats your spaces have. You can do it. Well, now that I have to go out, I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hi, I'm Lauren, and I own the Actors Company. We're on the western edge of the fringe. Um, so restaurants and places to walk to before and after, and uh, dress up for uh, We have three venues. 
Uh, one of them is 80 seats, and it's a raised stage, more formal kind of venue, plush theater seats. We have a 22 seat theater, which is great for one person, two person. I'm out of town and I don't know anybody's shows. Um, you know, it's a manageable amount of people who fit in. And then our third venue is 56 to 70 seats. It's a true black box in that everything moves. Um, we have platforms and folding chairs in there. It's 1,500 square feet, so it's a very generous size. Um, but it all moves, so you can configure how you like. And um, that's a fun space. Uh, so many unique space. Um, as far as how we book, um, just info at the actors company la.com. We'll send you an email and a, a brochure back, and we'll arrange for tours. We tour Monday through Friday, all, all times during the day, with the full staff at all times at the theater, and full staff in the evening for fringe as well. And um, is it, can I have an answer? That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll give it a thumbs up. Happy to answer any questions. It's a fairly new, newer space. It's about five years old. Um, we maintain it uh, very diligently. Hi, my name is Matthew Quinn. I run Theater Asylum. Uh, I've been running venues and producing in uh, for the Hollywood Fringe since year one, so nine years now. Um, this year, I am actually booking it's eight different. It's the tenth that I've done. Oh, okay. We all have uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're not doing theater, theater, the theater. Oh, yeah, no, I was thinking we should not do <laughs> um, So, this year I'm running eight spaces. So, quickly running through that Studio C is a 38 seat solo house, but also great for two handers and small two pieces. We have had a 14 piece orchestra there, just saying. Uh, Stephanie Fury, 36 to 42 seats, has a nice uh, set of furniture. Stove, set, all that type of stuff there. McCadden Theater, our largest space, goes up to 60 seat. Nice big double level stage for those big musicals and large ensembles. And the Underground Annex, uh, new space for us this year, sharing a space uh, at the New American Theater Company. Uh, that's a small, intimate 31 seat house. And then finally, I will be booking finally. So if you get a chance, there's a common room here that can go up 100 plus. And then there was a 50 seat house right behind me, a 30 seat down the uh, hallway, and a nice dance studio that can fit about 50 people right next door. Um, our process, so because I run so many venues, I'm open to any and all way of contacting me. So I've got cards here you can grab, and it's with my email and phone number, so always feel free just to reach out that way. You can get all of our information. We also have a venue packet detailing more information on our process. Uh, that's at theaterasylum.com, theater spelled E-R. <laughs> and you can also always go through the French site and apply through that. I monitor all the different ways of doing it. Uh, I usually find a good talk to set things up, kind of point you in the right direction with our spaces, and then I run tours throughout the, uh, the next up. You did great. Was that good, good man? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I get all the points. It was really good. Okay, here I go. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Monica Martin. I'm the owner of the Complex Hollywood. It's at 6476 Santa Monica Boulevard at the corner of Wilcox in Santa Monica. Uh, we have five theaters. I'll be running four of them for Fringe. Uh, we have two uh, 50 seats up to 55. Equity. Um, <laughs> Presidium <laughs> stages. Um, uh, we have one that has a built in set. So if you're doing something that's an interior kind of thing, it has a balcony, two entrances, and exits. It's, it's all built in. Um, we have another Presidium stage, 50 to 55 seats. Um, that has a red, green, uh, red, uh, grand drape and red, uh, black velvet curtain. So uh, that one is really good for cabarets, um, type things. Um, we've had a lot of good sketch shows in there that come over. And also one-person shows do really great if you want that kind of separation from the audience. 
Um, upstairs, we have the flight theater. It's a black box with a movable set. We have movable walls now. The um, uh, seats are fixed, uh, but we, you can reconfigure the stage any way that you would like for entrances and exits. Uh, we also have the OMR, which stands for Oh My Ribs, because it's usually a comedy theater. We take it over for June, and that has 49 seats. And it is a space with a, it's a proscenium with also a back proscenium and sliding doors that offer you a lot of entrance and exit kind of opportunities upstage. Um, how do we book? Okay, so I look for applications. I love it when it comes through the fringe site because then I know you've created your project, I can find you and uh, I can have you on my list on the fringe. It's just something I like. Um, I will answer you when you apply. I'll send you back an email letting you know how to get in touch with us and where the, uh, when the tours are going to be because we will have uh, tours starting. They've already started, but Tuesdays <laughs> and Thursday. Um, and that's all in the email. And then we talk, and I'd like for you to come in and see the spaces and find the one that speaks to you the most for your show. And if none of ours do, then I'll point you somewhere that does because I know what all of the other ones look like, and so <laughs> it's easy to do. Um, <clears throat> we just want you to be happy with your space. Um, what else? I think that's great. That's it? That's, that's, that's all I'm done. And we're going to stumble a little bit more. I that. stumbled. No, 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 I'm no, fine. You, you were so clean I said clear. red and then black. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's all on film. So I stumbled. <laughs> Everyone uses it. <laughs> um, and then 
uh, it, you can also do beautiful things with lights and effects and things like that on that site wall. Um, because they, everyone uses the wall, we don't have a traditional uh, like back cross. So we have built some rolling flats and some different set pieces that everyone can use in the space. And so people get really creative and use these in amazing ways. So um, I can show you some pictures of it afterward if you want to talk to me. The way that we book is the, did I say it's 45? It's 45. <laughs> and we're really full up to about 50. But we could be 45. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> and uh, the way we book is, uh, I like through the website, if you want to apply through the website, uh, same as Monica, I will email you back. I generally won't reply <laughs> through the website because sometimes I, those can get a little bit lost, but I will email you directly. Or you can just email me directly. I have cards if you want me to email. And uh, the way we schedule is uh, basically all of our schedules are already made and I send out different packages for you to choose from. So they're quite flexible, especially early on right now. Um, if you see a package you love but you need to change just one show, no problem. We can certainly do that for you. And we also include um, three times the length of your show for a tech. And then the following week, we include a fully tech dress rehearsal. So Texas studio stage start relatively early in May, but then you do get a full run with your stage manager and your whole cast, which is nice. So yeah, I think that's it. Did I miss anything? No, no, okay. You're all good. Done. Hey. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, Patrick Duffy, I'm with the Broadwater, which is uh, Santa Monica and Lillian, so it's one block west of Vine. Uh, we have four spaces uh, for Fringe. We have a, um, a small 21 seat studio, which can expand to 28. We have a 50 seat black box. We have a 75 uh, ish, uh, we, we call it our second stage, which is a sort of a traditional uh, riser to the proceeding. Um, and then we have a 99 seat main stage. Uh, and we also have uh, uh, a bar, a full service bar in our building called the Broadwater Club, which we'll be hosting in the office hour. Um, and so we have five spaces one's a bar for our, our uh, theaters. Uh, we, um, we book through mainly through our. Uh, we can communicate uh, through the web fringe website. We generally do all of our uh, communication through our uh, email, which is rentals at thebroadwaterla.com. Um, and we uh, basically we schedule. We set the whole schedule before we sign on the dotted line, so you know exactly what your shows are. And we just sort of go back and forth, and we try to uh, <coughs> we try to help you get your dream schedule based on our the packages. You know uh, the, the how those um, break out, but. Um, and you know your dream schedule gets harder and harder as we get closer to frame. Um, but right now it's it's still possible. Um, uh, and uh, what other thing was there? Hang on, that's it. Yay! Yeah. 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 Hey everybody, my name is Drew Wilson. I am the manager, tech director. I'm the only employee, so I can, <laughs> I'm the czar of awesome. Um, but we're the Assistant League Theater about five blocks north of here. Uh, we are one space. We have 328 seats. We are a beautiful 80-year-old proscenium stage. Um, generally bookings, we uh, go through the, web, the French website. It has my email and phone number for contact information. Um, we have, uh, let's see, we have four dressing rooms with 22 mirrors, so we work really well with big casts. The only thing as far as booking that I may want to have a conversation about is if you have tap shoes. Because mm -hmm. the first year at Fringe, it was a full tap company and the floor was just destroyed. <laughs> Apart from that, we welcome it. Um, <laughs> but it's a really great space. It is a lot of seats, but it is also very intimate and the acoustics are fantastic. It's beautiful. Come check it out, hit me up, and we'll, uh, we'll do some tours. We'll take the tap rooms. Sweet. <laughs> I'm uh, Jeremy Lucas from uh, Jack's Theatricals, and we uh, are upstairs at the Met, which is just right kind of kitty corner from here, 1089 North Oxford. It's a it's a big 99 fixed seat house. You can get up to like 120 if you add seats, um, and you can book. You can find out our website is jackstheatricals.org. And uh, there's a tab that says the Met there, and then the email is the Met at jackstaffordbook.org. Thank you. <laughs> Nobody used the microphone, but I'm going to. <laughs> 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 um, so, like 
Then this is not all of the goodies that park in the fringe. Then you're like, what about the people that aren't here? How do I check them out? <coughs> we got you covered. If you go to hollywoodfringe.org forward slash venues, you'll see a listing of all the venues and you can sort that by seats. So if you have like a, a goal in mind, if I want 30 people to come to every show, you can search by 25 to 50. Or if you have a goal of, I want 250 people to come to my fringe show, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> but awesome, that's super awesome. And if you can do that, that's great. And then you can find it and search by that, you know? So the fringe has all these different goodies that offer all these different types of things. And so the next question I kind of want to ask everyone is what genres or types of shows work best in your space and how do you kind of choose that? Do you curate it a little bit? Do you tend to choose people that email you with all of the information of uh, first hand and then you're like, okay, you're good and organized and I can get along with that? Or is it more like, oh, I'm interested in this topic? And so how, how does that work for you? And uh, we'll start here. So we have an arts education organization. So I, I, we say where education and entertainment unite. That's for our the youth theater mm -hmm. that we do. Uh, and then for the professional theater, we like to say it's for the modern family, uh, whatever that is. Um, so we like uh, we do a lot of musicals, and and the Met. And it is, like I said, it's one of the bigger 99 houses. So uh, musicals are good, or large casts are good. Um, I, we like LGBTQI material. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, the fringe is not curated. So and you, you can find a venue for doing pretty much anything. Um, but I just want to kind of know what sparks your eye when you first get that. Um, musicals and gay stuff. Musicals and gay stuff. That should be their tag. That should be. I'd buy that t-shirt. Um, so, typically, half of the year, our theater spends putting on theater for underprivileged children, and the rest of the year, it kind of just sat empty until I was hired. So, when I got hired, I wanted to be involved in Fringe. I wanted to get the theater community in to see this amazing space that's just it's empty half the year. Um, and so, for me, if I get uh, like, hey, a show is interested in your venue, if I can like go on and, and see what you've posted and describe your show, and I, I just want theater to happen. So if you come to me with like, hey, I have this idea, if you can just, you know, if you can convince me, then you're off to a good start. But I, I just really want to see good theater. I don't really discriminate. Um, I'm supportive, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm a, like an uncle that's like, don't worry, everything will be okay. No, I'm very, I love theater. That's why I took this job. So, generally speaking, um, I'm going to stop now. <laughs> I love theater too. <laughs> I love theater. Um, so we, our, our, uh, uh, our main stage is, is, um, is one of the largest spaces as well. So it's, it is sort of, a great place for the larger musicals that want to sit. Um, uh, we have, all of our spaces are very different, so we don't, um, uh, so definitely a tour is great because it is sort of um, a Goldilocks feel of like what fits exactly, you know, it's too big or too small or too, so uh, uh, from our little studio that can, is great for one person shows, although I see a 12 person show in there, um, up to our big main stage, there's uh, something for everyone, so it is, it is good to Check out the, the our space and uh, the broadwaterla.com is our website, too, uh, venue website, so you can see all these pictures of the spaces. Um, we don't uh, uh, curate. Um, the only curation we do is that you can't dip, like be nice um, because <laughs> if you're really not nice from the get go, then we'll, we'll probably pull back a bit um, because we have so many shows in our building and it's such we put so much. Um, emphasis on the community, you know, we all have to be in this one building for, you know, two months, um, then we, everyone needs to be a, a, a team player. So um, other than be nice to your fellow fringers and to your venue, um, we, we have a very eclectic group of shows um, in our space. Um, yeah. Yeah, don't be jerks. That's be jerks. the number one, number one rule of fringe. Probably all the number one venue rules as well. <laughs> um, so at Studio Stage, uh, we 
have a really big variety of shows. We have we've done huge musicals there, um, and then we've also done a lot of one-person shows. Uh, again, a lot of people like to use that psych wall and the projections. So uh, if your show needs that, it's a great place to check out. I generally tell people when they take tours that we look at our space as kind of a 99 seat size stage with a mid-sized house. So. We have had musicals on there with a full band on stage plus 15 cast members, and it's totally fine. But then, you know, if, if they are new to town or, or they're concerned about selling a, a really big house, then they have a mid-sized house to sell it in. So, um, but in terms of curating, we don't, we don't really curate. Well, everyone is welcome, um, but you know, it is family run and we want everyone to be a family. Greg and I have all, are also producers. Uh, we've produced at the Fringe every year since year one, so we do a lot of uh, just producing consultations with people. Generally, leading up to Fringe, I'll wake up in the morning and I have like 38 emails that are just questions about like, what do I do with whatever? And I'm happy to help one-on-one -on -one with everyone. Um, we also try to like kind of make that family feel. We usually can only have about 20 to 23 shows at Studio Stage, so um, we do things like we put a Facebook group together of all of our producers and we encourage them to all you know, see each other's shows and support each other all within the venue. So we, we really try to encourage that family feel. So again, hoping that everyone's not jerks is the key. <laughs> don't be a jerk. Yeah, but, but everyone's welcome. Yeah, don't be a jerk. <laughs> yeah. Really, everyone should start that way. <laughs> don't be a jerk. Um, we uh, we do not curate. Every everyone is welcome. Uh, if you have anything technical and crazy that you need, just ask up front for any venue. Uh, I had uh, we last year we had an aerialist come in that did fire and all this jazz, and she asked very up front, and so I was like, okay, let's work with you. Let's see what we can do. Um, but I would definitely would not wait if you have a lot of technical requirements till the end. Um, to talk to your venue about it. By the way, I like went on a tangent. Um, but we're very, very inclusive. We have um, we have 50 seat houses, and really they can they can do such a range from a one person show all the way up. I think the biggest cast we've had in there is 25 people. Um, so yeah, it just depends. Yeah, but all is welcome. Just email us. Uh, we. Uh, uh, I was done. I thought that was okay. uh, that you were handing me the yeah, I was like, Okay. Here you go. Uh, we uh, we also it's it's anything you want to do almost um, we're we're happy to let you do. Um, we we just want uh, people in that are are ready to do some theater and and happy to be there and excited. We are very dedicated to making sure that your whole experience, not only at our venue but at Fringe itself is just the best it can be. Um, my staff is very dedicated to helping you with any aspect of your production that you need help with. We have a lot of people coming in that have never produced a show before. We're happy to let you know what you need. Um, if it's costuming or set or something that can help you pull it all together, whatever it is, you can come and talk to us. Um, we're very happy to do that kind of thing for you and um, with you. Um, I just, we've had magic and we've had mayhem and we've had, um, you know, musicals and straight shows and solo shows. Everything that you can think of has been on our stage because we have a stage basically that would fit any kind of thing you could think of doing. So we've even had live animals. Ooh. Yeah, live animals. We had a chicken and a diaper. I brought this up. <laughs> I needed insurance that they would put the diaper on the chicken. Yeah. Um, because that was my biggest concern. That's but I mean, so literally, right. it's like, it's it's just, we want everyone to, to do the art they want to do. And um, that's what we're all about. So no, we do not curate. We ask that you be nice, and I love bourbon. That's it. That's <laughs> all you need to know. I second the bourbon. That's, that's really it. I like puppies. Put puppies in your show. Uh, <laughs> Um, one of the reasons I love the Hollywood Fringe is because it's so not curated and really opens up a wide gambit of shows. Um, because we have eight venues, we really, in one of our venues, we have a place for your show. Some are more geared towards solo, some are more geared towards musical and larger shows. 
Um, so during our conversations, I may suggest uh, one or the other, but ultimately you've got to walk into the space and take it all in. Um, echoing what uh, the other venues have said, you know, we do look for people that play well together. We do a lot to support, and a lot of that support is getting you guys to work together. We do weekly uh, PR meetings up until Fringe, where we all get together and, and try to find ideas that we can all use to get butts in seats. So, uh, yeah, bring your show in. I'd love to talk to you about it, and uh, find one of our various venues to fit you. No curation. We're, are you doing this? What's that? Oh, my name's Matt Quinn with Theater Aside. I got it. <laughs> uh, we're not curated either. Also, the same kind of criteria. If, if, you know, if I get a vibe, it's going to be very difficult. And, you know, you're going to take all the focus and the energy. And we have 40 shows playing. You can't have one show be the only <laughs> show that you're focusing on. Um, we do mixers. You know, at the venue, so that everybody gets to know each other, uh, tend to get along and exchange ideas and and uh, uh, tickets to each other's shows and all that kind of stuff, and support and borrowing set pieces and all that <laughs> winds up happening. Um, I, I've only had good experiences, so um, you know, it, it's, don't be the first. <laughs> no, but I, I think most people have it. It's, it's, you know, you you should approach fringe as a, a community feel. You should be part of a community. That's mm -hmm. kind of what fringe is geared for, and I think all the venues are geared that way too. And especially when you have <coughs> going with shows going all throughout and people coming in and out. And, you know, we also educate ourselves about the other shows. We do a central box office so that, and we have tons of posters behind us so that when people come in and they've seen one show, they always, they get very excited and it's like, what else is good? Mm -hmm. So if everybody within the venue knows what else is good there, they're gonna say, well, why don't you stay for the nine o'clock show? And here's the poster, this is what it's about. And, you know, so we get a lot of people to do that, you know, especially since they've already found parking and they can go to the bar and, you know, but um, uh, any genre, uh, we have a lot. We tend to get a lot of musicals and and bigger shows because our two of our venues are on the bigger side. Uh, but then we have the smaller show. Yeah, probably the same as everybody else. Yes. And you should go to all the venues that you think are at all right because, you know, like Patrick said, you, you're going to fall in love with. You're going to see your show in the venue, and that's the venue that you should. Everybody here is very nice and very helpful and all have experience with fringe. So. My turn. Um, <laughs> again, Janine from the New American Theater. And um, we have, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really sweet black box space. And um, I'm, a, I'm a theater producer myself. Actually, New American Theater is a, is, a, uh, is a membership theater company. So we have an acting company. And as a producer along with my husband, uh, Jack Scalin, who's sitting over there, I've produced over 80 shows myself, so um, I am very, um, I'm very uh, tuned in to what a first-time producer is uh, wants to do to a person who's done it a lot. So we do not curate um, uh, so far. <laughs> we'll see, uh, but uh, we do um, we do have um, uh, personal taste, meaning like everyone has said. Um, we do invite nice, friendly people to come in and share our home with us because we are opening up our theatrical home to our fringe friends. So that being said, um, our space can handle anything from a one-person show to um, I produced pure gint on a 15-foot stage. Yeah. So anything is possible if you have your mind set on it. So um, we will help you and we will guide you. So check out New American Theater. Okay, I'll be that guy. There's going to be some light curation. And honesty. I mean, the, the, look, if I'm being honest, there's going to be some shows that aren't appropriate for the LGBT Center. I mean, it's, it's just the nature of theater. I'm not going to say you can't do your show. I might say your show might be better suited to one of these other venues. 
Um, and I, I think I'm the only person on this panel who can say that I've worked in every single one of these venues. I'm, I'm also a freelance lighting and sound designer and have been for 15 years. You can't go wrong with any of the venues at, at the stable. And I, I say that in all honesty. The Assistance League Theater is one of the most beautiful theaters in Los Angeles that unless you're a child and saw Aladdin or one of the shows that, that the nine o'clock players do, you wouldn't know it. Um, so I'm so thrilled to see that you're part of, of Fringe because it, it's a gorgeous space, it really is. Um, and anyway, you can't go wrong with anybody on this panel. Um, but we're definitely interested in shows that, that speak to the community that we serve, which isn't necessarily the entire Fringe community. It's certainly a portion of it. That being said, if you've got a kick-ass show, we're not gonna you know, not consider you because you don't deal with the themes that we're interested in talking about. Um, or if you have a kick-ass show that just doesn't fit with us, we can certainly refer you to anyone in the spaces. Um, yeah, we all just want to see good shows going on, you know, and we want to be as supportive as we can. Uh, if you were at the Fringe Opening Festival opening party last year, the courtyard is the courtyard of our venue. So, uh, that's, a, that's a pretty good part to play with. Um, so in between shows, um, absolutely, the, the, the next show coming in, and we give a half hour between shows so that you can have the time to set up and you can set up in the courtyard to, to get tickets sold. But at all of these, most of these venues have independent uh, areas to buy and sell tickets so you can do that in advance of the next show. So I don't think, I, I haven't seen it for a while where you can't, you know, where you have to be careful about lining up to get tickets because you're standing at the door of the venue. Anyway, that's either here or there. Um, <laughs> I've, I've talked myself off the tracks. What am I doing? Curating. Curating. Yeah, we do it. <laughs> We don't. Um, the Hudson, just all are welcome. The two spaces we have for Fringe are very different from one another. One's like solo show, two-hander. The other one is, yeah, and this one's like 15, 14 feet wide. This one's like 46 feet wide. And I don't know. It's like, you got to come see it. Um, what else are we talking about? They're both great spaces. What, uh, what types of shows are best suited for you? Uh, all are welcome. OK. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> so I'm not gonna. So only great, only great, great show. Show. award winning. Right. <laughs> so if you're not that, but I mean I will say that you know, a lot of people are talking about community and 40 shows, and and that's not probably the experience at the Hudson. You might own the night. You might be the only show. We don't we don't really do that volume. Um, so as far as community goes, there's no community. <laughs> Person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's tours. just the tours. You really, yeah. and it goes yeah. both ways. It's you it really feeling does. us mm -hmm. out too. So it's the in person that I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like a hard date, like making sure that they're, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're yeah. serious about it. For, yeah. for us, you're going to get a lot more information. 
connection when you're there in person seeing the spaces yeah, sure. than you are through email, through, you know, if we send out our brochure packets to you, you know, you'll get so much more information being in the space yeah. mm -hmm. and, and seeing the options versus just being told the options. Mm -hmm. And Fringe is a journey that like we all go through with you together. So like that's, I always found like as a producer when I was renting spaces, that was something that I was taking into account too is like, you know, is this venue and the staff here, like who I want to take this journey with? <laughs> and we get a lot of people who will say that after all, like they'll say, I want to work here because I love everything at Studio Stage and because I love you and Greg. Like, I mean, that's really nice, but I mean, like, you could say that about anyone here because they're going lovely. So I think a lot of us hear that too, which is nice. <laughs> it's also when I get an email uh, that where you, the person is genuinely excited yeah. to do yeah. fringe, that's such a breath of fresh air. Some, sometimes you get where they think they're ordering a pizza and it's already, <laughs> it's, and it's already like late. You know, so they're sort of they're emailing you like, I need this and this, and I need about you know, yeah. And it's, yeah. But then you get these emails or these calls that it's just, this is going to be fun, and I don't know why I'm doing this. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's great. Yeah. You know, after doing this yeah. show, for so many years, I start feeling that too. I was like, I don't know why you're doing it either. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's the journey. So it's the journey. Yeah. 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 But you're but you're saying like uh, but a solid amount of information within that email is is typically appreciated. No, yeah, I mean, I, I hope they, they don't know why they're doing it, but they know what they're doing. You know, yeah. they, like they. Uh, it's not like, hey, I want to do a show. Well, because you get sometimes okay. too where people don't understand what you know the fringe is. Like, I'd like three solid nights where it's just me. Or I'd like to, you know, where they don't get. I want get only eight o'clock on Friday. Only eight o'clock, or, or you know, uh, <laughs> where they don't, when they're not excited or, or accepting of core parts of Fringe, where your show's going to be all, you know, different times and and butt it up against other people, and it's going to be fun. When that is a, a negative to them, then it's it's a little hard. Mm -hmm. I find so, it too that when when people question, um, I I did when they when they question the the kind of like this is. This, this would be the thing for you to do. Um, you know, when all of us, many of us have been with it for nine years now, or, you know, even to one year in and you've got something under your belt, you know, um, but to uh, the, to question the, you know, oh, I don't know if we should switch things up and do it at all hours of the day and night. That like, seems crazy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but really it's the best way to do French. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, being, I think it's like, I love people who are willing to give away their expectations of what they think it's going to be and kind of go with, um, you know, some new ideas and things that were, are really meant to just help you be successful. Like don't bring a full set. Like well, no yes. full set. Keep it simple. Yeah. And just keeping it really simple. Is, that's our that's our motto. And, and interesting, uh, our experience as well. Like I... I most venues have a 15 minute load in load out policy and I've had some people get very nervous about that. I've had people say like, I can't do French because I can't load in 15 minutes. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not that hard. We had a show last year with 26 people in it and like it was a million things and a million costumes. Well, it's easy when and it was fine. people. Exactly. <laughs> Everyone walks in, they're there. So, um, and, and I think trusting that like, if you have that panic, come to us and we'll help you. Like, we're not gonna tell you, yeah, you're right, there's no way you can do that. Like, we're gonna work it out for you because that's what Fringe is about. Like, doing the crazy thing, it'll, it's fine. We want you to succeed. And, yes. And I think that you're also hitting on this point of like trusting the, pre trusting the precedent mm -hmm. and knowing that people have done it before and through these panels and through talking to your venue and people who have done it before, you're gonna learn about the precedents that they have set, the things that they have learned and be able to learn from those as well, right? Mm -hmm. And every venue has their own, I think, you know, things that work for that venue best because of where they're located or how many, um, how many actual venues are in the space. I mean, they all work a little bit differently, but we all kind of have the same philosophy. So that's what's cool about going around and looking at them all. Yeah, you'll hear it when you meet us. Mm -hmm. And you also, even though there is a precedent, one of the things that's amazing about Fringe, it does change to a certain amount every year. And every year, <coughs> somebody has some bold new idea. Um, I would just suggest kind of talking to us, kind of getting an idea, because that's one of the fun things about Fringe is experiment. Mm -hmm. 
So kind of give you kind of a good guidance, but we're always open to hear kind of a new crazy idea. Oh, yeah. Surprise the audiences, not the venues. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, I like that. Right. Yeah, that's a good one. Best practices, not rules. Yeah. Um, so that kind of launches me into this other question. Um, so you're hearing like don't book for 8 p.m. on a Saturday, which might be okay at a couple of venues that might not book 40 shows or something different. But if you are looking to book a variety of different times, what other times are great? I know some of you have set times, but like a 2 p.m. on a, on a Thursday, has that been successful? Or what about a 2 p.m. on a Saturday? Yeah. Those yeah. are good. Yeah. Yeah. And so what when people are looking to book times with you, I know it's gonna vary venue to venue, so we can kind of go down the line for this. How do you start that conversation? Yeah, I mean I think this is a <laughs> <laughs> I think the Hudson might be the venue that is gonna be more traditional, like we don't do two PM on a weekday. Um, it's gonna be like eight o'clock shows and, and matinees on weekends. That's kind of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the center is also going to be slightly different. Um, we don't open to the public until 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. So the first booking will start at 6.30 so that participants have a half hour to load in. And the way that we're booking shows at the center is everybody gets a two-hour block starting from... So the first show would start at 6.30. 8.30 would be the start time for the next show. But the first show starts, they're loaded in at 6. They get a full half hour. If it's a 90-minute show, they're done by seven, uh, half an hour, by 8 o'clock, which gives a half hour until the next show. And we only do three slots per week now, so 6.30. And honestly, those slots have seemed to do really well on weeknights. Um, I think we take Wednesdays off. That's our dark night. Uh, I don't know why I'm looking for approval over here. You're doing what? But uh, Saturdays and Sundays, uh, anytime 11 a.m. on, I've seen, I've seen shows sold out at 10 a.m. So it's... It really just depends on what the show is and who your target audience is. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll have shows running all day Saturday and Sunday. Uh, the New American Theater, we uh, book um, Thursday through Sunday. Um, uh, so it's Thursday evenings. I'm right about this, right, Jeff? Yes, basically. All right. You tell me we're working together for over 20 years. That's my answer, I guess. Um, um, so Thursday evenings, Friday evenings, we start around 6, 6.30. We have, we, our slots are early evening, evening, and late night. So um, early evening be 6.30, It's gonna depend on whether the show is a 60 minute show-ish or a 90 minute show-ish, exactly how the time slots are. And then on Saturdays, we start at two with the matinees, we go to late night, and on Sundays, um, I think we're, we've got a little wiggle room with Sundays. Uh, starting at two o'clock as well. So, uh, what time we try to spread out people's shows so everyone has a combination. If you want to do five shows, four shows, whatever, you get a combination of different time slots. You can enjoy not only trying to get audiences that might go to another show, uh, you know, try to get people in to see your show, but then you can also, I know you want to check out other shows as well. So, uh, we try to make it easy and convenient for everyone to at least have. I think, anyway, a lot of really great slots. So you're happy, everyone's happy. I'm done. Okay, okay. Um, we do the same times, evenings during the week, and then the weekends uh, from early till really late. Uh, the, the way that we like to book is we take all the contracts, and then on March 29th, which is a couple of days before April 1st deadline of registration is when we put out the schedule. Uh, if you, you can list conflicts that you have along the way, but we don't book the schedule until that time. This allows, we find, for a very fair and equitable schedule. So the person that comes in on March 28th is gonna have as equally a good schedule as the person that books now in January. Um, I think that helps to add to the community feel. Um, I, uh, I'm very good at scheduling. And, uh, it comes from the fact that I've, I've run uh, two film festivals and I'm looking at over 40 years of festival at this point. And um, I, I really believe in a fair, equitable schedule, meaning that everybody will have either a Friday or Saturday night prime time. Everybody will have a, a weekday or a, you know, a, an afternoon 
didn't schedule one that's early, one that's later. You know, so it's, it takes a while for you to all worry about working in place. My recommendation, and I, why I think everybody's saying some of these shows are really good, is if you look at your shows, and you have, let's say, five shows, market them individually. Don't mark it as, this is my schedule. Say, okay, you know what? That two o'clock show is gonna be great for my, my grandma and people who finish church and da da da. My waiter friends are gonna do great on that evening show, late night or one, midnight or whatever. Um, and uh, you know, during the week, this is who's it's gonna feel mom and dad really wanna come eight o'clock on Friday. You know, so there's there's a place for all of it, and I think if you really look at it like that, you'd be surprised at how well the market. And also, everybody in Fringe, they can't come to eight o'clock on Friday and Saturday night. You know, uh, after we had put out the schedule, we had a late person come in, and for some reason, we had a lot of Saturday evening slots still left. So I gave them all Saturdays, and he came back to me and told me I, that was the worst thing. I was, he said that I thought it was going to be the best, the most incredible schedule. He said it was so hard to get all Saturdays, to get people to come in only on Saturdays. Yeah, so that's another idea that you may want to rethink for this particular thing. If you were doing like a six week run somewhere, I would be like, yeah, go for the Friday, Saturday nights at 8 o'clock and just make it established. But for fringe, it's a different animal when it comes to schedule. Yeah. Um... I'm not going to go through each of the times and schedules for all eight spaces. It's all in the packet. But generally, generally following evenings, afternoons, and Saturdays, Sundays. Um, two things. Several of us do packages where we sell you five shows. Um, usually it's like two evenings, two afternoons, and one early or late night. This, again, is kind of pushing this kind of considered view of spreading it out not only through the month of June, but also different days and times to give different options. Um, and the other thing, kind of echo what Lauren said too, I, viewing each show separately, um, I have had shows come in and book a 10 o'clock on Tuesday because they had a friend who had an agent who was gonna be able to come at 10 o'clock on Tuesday. <laughs> and they based the show around that. I've had fringe veterans book four o'clock on a Thursday or Friday afternoon because they know that's a time when most fringe veterans are available and that's when they push them. So it is kind of counterintuitive, some of this. We try to talk people out of consecutive shows, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, and really kind of embrace this because it is a, it is a festival running all throughout June. And you, there is several different markets in here to kind of push. So be open to that. It really and, and also, through. unless you have like an actor who's only in town for this limited time, going throughout the month of June is a good idea because you build momentum and you start getting reviews and you don't want to like yeah. push everything into one week because then, you know, if someone's out of town, that's it. They're kind of like, oh. And so it, the preview week, June 6th and June 11th, most people do one show there and then spread out the rest. And that's just kind of standard. Right. Variety. Right. Variety is key. Variety is your friend. It really is. I, I, have, I have, during the first, this will be my 10th friend um, in some capacity. Most of it has been booking, but I have seen people come in and they're just like, no, I want 7 o'clock across the board or yeah. 8 o'clock across the board. And at the beginning, when I first started, I was like, okay, well, that's what you want. And um, then they would come back to me the next year and say, I was totally wrong. <laughs> I want to mix it up. Um, we do two hour time slots. Uh, I used to do time slots that were 15 in, 15 out, no matter the length of your show. And I've had a change of heart um, this year. Um, well, yeah. I just decided that I have a, a, quite a few fringers, I would say maybe a handful, that um, come back year after year. And uh, they might use a different theater in my space, but they like working with me, I like working with them, so it works out. And um, they were all thrilled. I thought they were going to be the ones that fought me, but no, they were thrilled <laughs> to be able to have a little bit more time. So um, if you want that, we have it. You're gonna have for an hour show, 30 minutes in, 30 minutes out, have a minute to breathe, um, which I really like. Um, what else are we talking about? Uh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Okay. That's how we do. It. That was strong. <laughs> I just want to say we started the two-hour time slots. Yeah. 
she left out. E R R E. Um, so I always like to say we like to give you one prime time evening, one prime time matinee, and fill in with the rest. So you know you might end up with a, a Monday at eight or ten, and that's when a lot of industry people yeah. come. Or you know a, a Wednesday at six is surprisingly packed. We used to do Wednesdays at noon, and we actually had one show that just sold out every Wednesday at noon. It's good for if anyone wants to do a Wednesday at noon, I will supply uh, the most. So, uh, so, uh, um, uh, so we like to do a combination. We do book a la carte, so you can book anywhere from one to however many shows. Average for Fringe is four to six, uh, so that just gets you a nice combination. And we, I think Tuesdays are our only dark day uh, between all of our spaces and. Uh, we do, uh, on like a Saturday, we go 12, these are all go times, 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and midnight. We do do a couple midnight shows. I'm sorry, can I just take it back one minute? Because I didn't say that we give you a schedule, you pick your schedule at our space, right? <coughs> you pick it, you decide what you want. We have blocks of five shows, you can add one on, but they're all mixed up. Some are heavier at night, some are heavier during the day, depending on what your show would bring in. Of course, a horror show is not going to do as great at 2 o'clock um, on a Sunday as it would at midnight. So um, you take that into consideration and know your audience. Know who you're um, trying to get to come through the door, and that will help you pick what time slots are best. Um, yeah, at Studio Stage, we do similar to everyone else. Um, yeah. but we. Uh, we do packages of five shows, one during Fringe, and then four throughout the festival that are spread out. Um, and for all those same reasons, because you want to build up your word of mouth and your buzz in between shows, you don't have to stack them all in one weekend unless you're coming from out of town and you're only there for one weekend, then okay. Um, but uh, generally, the way we schedule, or the way like we let you pick the schedule is I'll send you several different packages, and then you can choose from those, or if you say, this one looks great, except I need to move this one show and switch it, we'll, we'll make that happen, it's fine. Um, also, yeah, definitely think about your audience and, and also your show needs. Um, at Studio Stage, we do the 15 minute load in, load out. It's exciting and fun. Um, <laughs> it's super doable, I promise. Um, but if you have some sort of mega cleanup or something, then that's something to take into account. So um, two years ago, we had a vampire show that had a blood cannon. Uh -huh. We are still scraping blood off of our ceiling. <laughs> but uh, they asked for the last show of the night on Saturdays consecutively because they had to take an hour to clean up the entire theater with everything with blood everywhere. And we're like, sure, just mop. Um, and they did, and they were lovely. But, um, but that was kind of the exception to um, the varied schedule. And it worked for them because of the, the genre of their show. So you definitely want to take that into account, but for the most part, having a varied schedule just helps a fringe audience. There's a lot of fringers who will stack their shows like crazy. There's one guy, uh, Spencer, who a lot of you guys might know him, who saw, I think, 79 shows last year. Um, I think over that. It was over that. It was something crazy. It was something ridiculous. Like, oh, yeah. I don't think he's left. But every time I saw him, like, he would be at studio stage and he was like, I'm seeing six shows in a row here. And I'm going over to the complex. I'm seeing four more. So, like, <laughs> so, so, like, with him, he loved shows that were not Friday night at eight because it gave him the, the you know, ability to stack them all. Um, so, you want to think about that in terms of your fringe audiences as well. So, it's good to have strange times. But in terms of our actual times, uh, on the weekdays, we don't start until about 6 or 6.30. Uh, and then on the weekends, on Saturday, we start at 10 in the morning, which all of our 10 a.m. shows sold out last year, and we go until 2 a.m. nonstop. stop And then on, set, on Sundays, we're going to start around noon and go to about midnight, uh, and we don't have any dark times this year. So, woo, we'll sleep in July. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're dark Mondays and Tuesdays, so we go Wednesday through Sunday. Uh, our first uh, uh, weekday start time is at 5 p.m., uh, and then we're all day Saturday, all day Sunday. I think our starts at 11 a.m. on both days. Um, we do the 15 out, 15 and 15 out. 
A 15 inch, yeah. Um, and so it's it's a lot of crazy fun. Um, one one way that we make sure that that doesn't, uh, with four venues, and we'll, we'll have 25 performances, 25 to 30 performances on a Saturday, the way that we keep the trains running um, is um, we actually, I'm the managing director of the Sacred Fools Theater Company, and we're the resident theater company of the Broadwater. And so during Fringe, we kind of, we mobilize and try to run this space so that uh, things, uh, that shows get in, shows get out. We, we usually find a very loud color and make a t-shirts, and then we call them ambassadors. So there'll be Sacred Fools Theater Company and associate members and friends of Sacred Fools who are ambassadors wearing shirts uh, out front on the street, making sure that your volunteer that's doing your box office knows where to, where to go and where their line cues, brings them in, talks to, so we try to keep everything moving. So it, it's worked pretty well over the years, even with as much as we have. Um, we also, uh, we do set your, your schedule uh, before we sign the contract. So uh, basically you, within, we lean heavily into the packages. So if it's a five show package and it's two afternoons, two evenings and a late night or morning, then you uh, would send us your dream schedule to fit that. And then we try to make that work. And we might say, ah, that's busy. Let's move it to that one. Or, but, um, and then you'll know your schedule and when we sign and that's set. Um, we, because uh, our bar, uh, we opened our bar in the middle of Fringe in a crazy, <laughs> I still have PTSD from that. Um, and so uh, uh, what we'll be, we're, we're allowed to be uh, open as a bar um, starting at 10 a.m. on weekday, weekends. So um, so we will, um, we will break out the mimosas and the Bloody Marys. Um, and it'll be a fun, what's, what I'm excited about is, it was this before the bar, but now with the bar, it really is um, a place where you could spend the whole day. And you can see a show and you can go into the bar and have a drink and talk to other people who saw stuff um, and then go see another show. Uh, we're gonna try to have um, some multimedia in the bar so that you can see the schedule, see it sort of as a train, this is my dream, hopefully I can make it um, See it sort of as a train schedule so that, oh, it's blinking red, that's five minutes, that show's starting. Awesome. That's um, and so, uh, you know, intermixed inter with um, uh, marketing from the shows in our building so that you can kind of see what's going on. So we're really gonna be a, sort of a hub where you can just hang out all day and, and see shows. So that's an exciting new piece. Last year we just tried to survive in the bar, and this year now we have some plans about how to make it so. I have an important question. Yeah. Uh, where, will there be snow homes again? <laughs> so, there, uh, so uh, a, a year, was that last year? No, two years ago. Two years ago, we, uh, uh, I, actually, the president of, of my board was like, one week and said, okay, I'm gonna, make, I'm gonna buy a little snow cone machine, and I'm gonna give out free snow cones. And it was like week two of frame, so I was already like, we just gotta get through this, man. What are you, you know, innovating? This is way too late to be innovating. And he bought, and he sat there for like, we sat there for like eight hours and just gave away snow cones. And it was the most fun anyone's ever had. <laughs> Us giving them out, people were like, it's free, you know, it costs like five cents to give a snow cone. And they're like, it's free, oh my God. <laughs> and so it was so much fun. So uh, we actually have been talking about having some adult beverage snow cones. Oh, oh, so you know, they have to stay in the bar but um, you can't walk, this is in New Orleans, you can't walk around. <laughs> but, uh, but they're, you know, and of course, you don't have to, they can be virgin uh, uh, snow cones as well. Um, but, uh, so there's Todd, we, we were looking for the snow cone machine uh, a couple of days ago. So there was like, let's find it. You can't find it. So. I know where it is. <laughs> you know where it is? Okay. I know where the snow cone Okay, good, because we, we like, we'll have to buy another one. Our goal was <laughs> free popcorn this year, because we have a popcorn machine, and the goal was free popcorn last year, and then I just didn't order the, part that I need to fix the machine. Uh, but this year we're gonna do it. Put it out there. I've had free hugs. I'd like to jump in real quick and mention that specifically for Fools, and I know the complex and the lounge, all the spaces that are represented here that have multiple venues have done a really phenomenal job of making sure that you get to the venue you're looking for. So the signage, Sacred Fools comes to mind because of the, the printing of the actual schedule on the banners, yeah. which is amazing. The lounge does a fantastic job of that, as does the complex. All of the spaces with multiple venues, again, I've worked there, I can say this, have done a really great job of delineating where the venues are, how to get there, what time the shows are running. So it's kudos to those venues for, for you know, keeping their shit together. Woo. Uh, Woo. All right. And guys, as we're talking about scheduling, as you can see, they're all <laughs> shows are stacked like sardines. Uh, and you're going to hear about this at almost every panel, but that is why it's so very, very, very important to start and end on time. 
cannot go over your time. <laughs> so I'm sure that you'll hear that a lot. I want to hear from two venues that aren't possibly stacked like sardines. Yeah. We're not stacked like sardines. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't have snow cone. Oh. <laughs> um, beautiful venue. <laughs> but it's beautiful. So <laughs> um, yeah, we're kind of the Hudson. We, we, um, this is our third fringe uh, participating. Happy to be a part of it. Um, but typically, we don't have forty shows going on. We we will have like five or six shows, and mm. we'll, you know, five or six shows. No, we'll um, <laughs> we'll kind of tend to work with your schedule whatever you like. Uh, I have to be present for every show, so if most of them happen on the same day, that's pretty sweet. But um, we work with you guys, and we don't have a fifteen minute load in load out. We kind of. Typically what we've done in the past is give you 15 minutes by yourselves and then maybe a half an hour like overlap <coughs> and you kind of get like half hour 45 to load in or load out and then the other venue would kind of share that half hour and then they'd have 15 by themselves. Um, there's access from two different sides of the street. We've got a loading dock or we have the green room entrance if you needed to do large set pieces to quickly get in or large cast members have to quickly get in. <laughs> um, whatever you require, um, we can do that. I don't know. I just, it's just what came out. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, we don't, we don't stack at all. We, we kind of work with you with whatever you kind of want, timing-wise, and uh, it's all pretty seamless and fun. We're, this is our first fringe. <laughs> so we're virgins. <laughs> Um, but we, uh, so like near the beginning of Fringe, we're flexible, uh, after 12 is probably best for us. Uh, and then kind of midway through after 6 p.m. is good. And then any, any day of the week is fine. Sweet. Um, since I want to get through like one more bigger question, um, and I've heard a couple, from a couple of you guys about this, um, a lot of venues have like a, this 15 minute load out load in time. And what that means is that you have 15 minutes to get all your stuff in, and 15 minutes to get all your stuff out. And then some venues don't. Um, and I know that we've heard from those of you, but those of you that haven't kind of mentioned that, uh, is there anyone that wanted to add anything more to that, or more about like tech time, how to book tech time, uh, or rehearsal time? Do you offer rehearsals at your venue? Anybody offer rehearsals? Thumbs up? Yeah. Cool. Anybody not? Sweet. So they all do. I would I would add too that finally this space with the four spaces is wonderful for rehearsal. And each room kind of coordinates with all the spaces that are up here. So if you're at one of the venues and they're booked, you can find an equivalent space here. So we're open for rehearsals throughout the fringe process for this. I'd also add for the package deal, and, and I think this is true for everyone, um, even though a slot may only give you 15 minutes in, 15 minutes out, if you really need more time, you can always purchase additional time. You also don't have to do five shows if you want to do three shows or if you want to do seven or nine. These are just kind of the standard practices, and again, like we were saying, there's flexibility, and it's just talking and being upfront with each venue that you speak. And in terms of that load up the loaded time, um, also talk with your venue about storage. If you do have pieces that are large or, or a lot of costumes or something like that that you feel is going to take a long time to move in and move out, depends on the venue. Uh, at Studio Stage, we have, I always say we have limited storage, and then I tell everyone, yeah, store everything there. <laughs> and then I get to tech, and I'm like, oh crap, but it hasn't bit me yet, so we're going to keep doing that. Um, so, um, <laughs> At, at, we have an upstairs storage room, so we have uh, every one of our shows gets like one big Rubbermaid bin to put all your stuff in, and you can store it upstairs. But then we also have a big loading dock, and that's where I'm always like, sure, it'll fit. So far it has. So um, talk to me about that. <laughs> but that does cut down on your loading load out time. And then like for us, we also have a big parking lot in the back, so that helps with loading in and loading out as well. It just depends on the venue, so definitely ask about that. Yeah, and I want to add in that, like, thinking that you're going to tech for a week and do a week worth of texts is pretty unrealistic for this type of um, festival. <laughs> so it's very not <coughs> it's this really quick tech for most of these venues. That being said, these rules are meant to be broken, and some of these venues really do have the time to do that. So if that's important to you, that's something you want to talk to your venue about, 
and figure out what's going to be the best for you. And guess what? After this last question, we're going to have a Q&A. So if you have any questions that apply to maybe other people in this room, you should ask them. Um, so I just wanted to last ask you guys about other services at your venue. Like, do you have a box office staff, tech staff, et cetera? Do you require the people that rent your venue to use these staff members? And do you usually charge extra for these services? So anything you're surrounding that, like the um, extra space you have in your venue, things like that that makes you But not saying prices, correct? No prices. So you can be like, you have to, why do you charge for that? And you can ask me at our tour. <laughs> we, we have a box office, and uh, yeah, we do have a full team of designers and crew that could be hired at an additional cost. Okay. Yeah, we have uh, a, an isolated kind of uh, will call ticketing box office thing in our courtyard, which is really lovely. Nobody's in it, so bring a friend who can work your box office for you. Uh, we have highly trained staff that, or not staff, but technicians that can operate our equipment um, that would be hired separately from us. Uh, and we do require, we have a lot of lights. There's a lot of stuff going on at this theater that's at your disposal. You just kind of need someone to operate it. So um, feel free to ask me more if you uh, we, so you do, at, at the Broadwater, you do all your own ticketing. Uh, we sort of uh, designate um, areas outside uh, because so much of our audience is milling about outside on the sidewalk and then coming into the specific lobbies. So we have, we'll, we set up stations where all four spaces have their box office. Um, and then as I said, we have our ambassadors, our crazy yellow, I don't know what color it is this year, but some of them. Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, that will be there to make sure you're at the right place and, and, and generally ask questions, you know, uh, answer questions. So if people come up and say, I'm here to see Steve's show, we might be able to figure it out. So <laughs> we, it uh, happens. we make a lot of lists right. so that we can figure out what Steve's show is. <laughs> uh, uh, we, uh, our, th our, three, our three biggest spaces, we do have a uh, stage manager that is in residence there throughout the ground range and runs all the shows there, so you can hire uh, directly. Um, our smallest space, our studio, we don't require that uh, because the, the equipment is, is similar. Um, and you can hire someone. We will have someone who is available to be hired, but you can also just uh, get a little tutorial and run your own space in the studio. The other three, you have to use the person. But what I find, especially with the 15, 15 hour or the short tech times, is that most people are very happy that our awesome stage manager board ops are running that space because they're not only they not only know how to tech your show and run your show because they know the space so well, but they also know intimately the show before and after you. So they know exactly how to make it all work. So it's it's been very valuable to do that. Um, and we don't we have some very limited storage for our big space, our main stage. Um, our smaller spaces we don't have any storage just because uh, well, we don't even generally have any storage for us. So um, uh, so you have to I'm gonna interrupt really quick. Uh, does anybody have, bring, did anybody drive a silver truck here and uh, uh, park across the street? Anybody? Silver truck across the street? No? Great. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, uh, uh, what was the question? Um, okay, <laughs> sorry. Uh, we include uh, three hour, or no, we include three times the length of your show in your package uh, for tech. So that is already included. If you, if you have an hour long show, you get three hours. If you have a 90 minute show, you get four and a half. Uh, and we always tell everyone, don't assume you're going to run your show. You're probably not gonna run your show at tech because <laughs> you're gonna be doing all your lights and your sounds and setting things and cue to cues and whatnot. Um, so because of that, we also include a fully tech dress rehearsal usually like the week after. So that's kind of nice. And we always schedule those after work hours so that hopefully your whole cast can be there. Um, and then in terms of our, our box office text and things like that, uh, we, we do require that you need to hire one of our venue stage managers. Uh, our lights are kind of complicated because they are run off of an ETC Nomad, which is a lovely, amazing program. But if you don't know the program, it's not like, just put some sliders up. No, when we first put it in, we thought we'd we're gonna be fine, and then we're like, we don't know how to turn our lights off. We do now, for sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but and then we do have a technician that you can you can hire uh, for just like a flat fringe rate to program your lights. And um, we have an unlimited amount of, of uh, cues you can put into that program, which is nice. Um, last year we had a show with over 300 and 70 cues. 
<laughs> so, no problem. That's fine. Uh, and then, um, what was it, like, box office. So, uh, so it's GTA with Big Bobby. Is this why you ask him the truck? I hope not. The okay, truck is on fire. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so we have, a, we have quite a big lobby at Studio Stage. We have a little, like, box office right in front, and then we have a, a big studio lobby that people can hang out in. And, where the popcorn's gonna be. Um, but we don't do your ticketing, so it's up to you if you wanna have someone do your box office, but we do really, really encourage that you have that person stay out there during your show. And the reason for that is because of people looking for Steve's show, will walk in in the middle of the lobby and be like, is this Steve's show? And then everyone can hear it <laughs> during your dramatic moment. Um, so it's best to have someone in the lobby Last year we started a policy where if you wanted to tell me uh, I need to hire someone, I will get someone that you can hire to do that. And it's a very low rate for its per performance. So uh, talk to me about that, but it, it worked really well last year and so people really liked it. So options. Uh, we require you to hire our tech person. They will program basic lights, basic sound for you. Anything that goes too crazy, we're gonna say get a designer. Um, they are in addition to our rates. Um, you'll find a lot of venues do that, and that's because several years ago, a lot of us would let anyone program. So we had directors and actors learning how to program lights. Well, one friend, we had our light board deleted twice. We have 20 shows per space. She might be pretending that fringe 20 shows. So, our, so don't be shocked when people say you have to use our tech people. Our this show we are producing had that happen twice. 173 light cues to reach. Twice. Gone. 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 Yeah. So that's so not going to happen anymore. That's, that's <laughs> why a lot of people do it. Um, we do, we offer for an additional cost uh, box office people who will check people in, or you can certainly provide your own. It's not a requirement. Um, I forgot the other questions. Sorry. Tech. Uh, storage is, I really like to go as for whoever really needs it the most, um, and it's very limited. And then uh, tech time, two hours of tech time is included in your rental package. Anything past that is a discount rate. Uh, the complex uh, offers four hours of tech time for a five show run. Um, if you need more, we do it at a discounted rate. We offer you discounted rehearsal time because we also have five studios upstairs in addition to the theater um, of all various sizes that can start out very well when you're first starting rehearsal in a smaller space, save some money that way. I also do packages for rehearsals, so you can talk to me about that. Um, as we go into tech, we do allow you to store things there. Uh, because we are so busy, it's such a busy place, I don't like to have you having to carry large pieces of awkward scenery in and out of the front doors. Um, so we do find a place for it. Uh, so, uh, coffins, whatever. We can, <laughs> we can do it. We've had two in one year. Two. Um, two different shows. Um, so anyway, uh, we can do that. Um, what, was the, what was the best? Yeah, box office. office. We offer um, stage management. We do have a stage manager that runs uh, every space, one for each space. The Most of them have been with me for three or four years now. Um, they're all very well versed in Cuba. Um, some have a bit of lighting design experience, but you'll come into a rough lot that has many different possibilities for you, and our stage managers make it work for your show however you need it to. We're able to add in a few extras if you need them. You just need to let us know early so we can work those into the plot. Um, and I do believe the stage managers are a good thing. Again, things don't get erased. They know your show. They know what's before your show and after your show so they can help kind of prep for what's coming up or um, what was just there. They can, you know, it's just, it's good. And they keep everything running very smoothly. They work in tandem with our box office staff we do have box office, again, since we're so busy. We have people on the street that they take care of uh, your will call. They take care of any money they can bring in for you. On the, they will. Um, <laughs> you do a pay what you can, and my gals are like, those people are spending a lot of money to put these shows in. <laughs> It'll be $20, and they get it. It's amazing. 
So um, they're worth every penny. They stand up there, they keep the crowd controlled, and they get everybody to their spaces on time. Um, there is a fee for both of those things, and uh, you can learn all about it with a quick tour. <laughs> Uh, we also believe that uh, you should use our stage manager tech person to run the show just to keep consistency and, and avoiding all the problems. Um, all of them are veterans, know the space backwards and forwards, um, and really kind of ease your tech process. Uh, box office, I'm a big fan actually of you running your own and then helping support you find somebody. I find actually part of getting an audience and helping is to meet people and ask them, you box office my show, I'll box office here. So, I'm a big fan of that. Um, storage varies from space to space, and generally it's a no until we have all of our shows booked and we can kind of assess who really needs it and what needs to be said, uh, what needs, who really needs the space. Um, I mentioned earlier we do PR support every week prior. It times out with office hours throughout to give support. Um, in addition, this is for anyone, whether you're an asylum venue or not, um, we are offering several workshops. I teach one on how to produce a Hollywood Fringe show that runs about once a week. We also have one by Matt Ritchie on how to direct for Fringe, and one on social media by Monique Le Bleu. So all those are available and in information. And then I'd also like to introduce my partner, Bertha Rodriguez, who runs our PR marketing. And she has a wonderful PR package for anyone, again, whether you're in asylum space or not. So. Check that out on the website, and we'll be here afterwards as well. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> we have um, three venues, as I mentioned. Uh, we do a central box office, so we'll run a point of sale. You'll come in with your few sold instructions, <coughs> swipers, whatever. We'll handle it for you. So that in that 15 minutes, that's not something that you have to be concerned about. At the end of each performance, we will have it neatly wrapped up. We have given color-coded tickets to each of the venues, each of the, so people know blue tickets go here, red there, whatever color. Thing. And that way, there's no mixing up and trying to figure out where you're supposed to go. We've done that at the box office point, um, figured out where you're supposed to go. And um, uh, you'll have somebody at your door collecting those tickets. So if you collect the 30 tickets, we'll have 30 so it'll match, so it's all very consistent. Um, the, we also handle concessions. They can bring their drinks in, food in if they like. There's no extra charge for any of that. That's just to make the space run really well. And so that's on us to, to help you in that sense. Um, the other thing it does with the running central box office is we can promote other shows. So if somebody's seeing one musical, I might, as I'm selling the ticket, oh, you love musicals? You have a great musical over there. You know, just check that one out too. You know, and just get a few ideas because people want to know what else is good, what else is good. So I give them what else is good. <laughs> you know, and I try and help out all the stuff. Um, yes, definitely use our techs. Um, they're, they know those spaces. We have them year after year after year. They know what those lights do. They save you time during tech. You say, hey, I want it to look like a sunset. Like that? Yes. Make it a little more red. OK, there you go. It's done. You don't have somebody sitting there going, uh, OK, this board, the lights are lit. You know, so it's, it saves time. Um, the other thing is, all the best techs in town are already hired here. You know, I don't know who else is left <laughs> that's, that you'd be using in the first place. The, we, we capture all the great <laughs> um, uh, We don't have any storage, but we do, we're in the middle of a parking lot and right out the door about 10 feet away from your, your theater front is gonna be a space reserved for you. So you just load your stuff in and load it out. And it's real smooth and very easy. Um, as far as promotions for the shows, besides us talking, we also blast to our email base. We have over 20,000 strong uh, coming from our own festivals um, film festivals and live festivals that we do so that's that they like festivals to begin with, so it's, mm -hmm. it's helpful to, and we, we blast about all the shows you know we don't say just come to see this one show it's like we try and give them information and then direct them to the fringe so uh, that I think ends, ends that yeah excellent well done <laughs> I have to take notes. Yeah, so I'm going to look at my yeah. notes. Um, New American Theater, um, we offer um, uh, free tech rehearsal time, depending on the 
the amount depends on the length of your show. They're generally uh, free text uh, for 60 and 90 minute shows. Um, and you can also always get extra rehearsal time if you need it. Uh, we do require that you use our stage manager, our board operator, and um, um, and for the reasons already stated, and you can also get tech, extra tech time there, and you would handle your funds with that person directly, not through us. And our, the way our booth is uh, set up, um, you could, if you're on a map, you can use QLabs, if you are a PC person, I have to use both, we also can use SFX, which is the Mac, the PC version of, you know, the um, sound and light cube thing, that's all available. We have a rep light plot, um, uh, which we just set up in this black box. <coughs> I'm really excited to have it for the print. Uh, we also have um, um, very limited storage, but it is possible. And we have rep furniture. So we have you know, chairs and tables and a uh, bed and a sofa. And um, oh, we have, we have a keyboard. And so that stuff is possible as well. Let's see, what else? Um, box office. We do ask that you do have your own box office manager, but we do have a representative from the New American Theater there at all times because we have, uh, like I said before, we've been producing plays, so we kind of know where it's It's not a mad rush for us. We've got it handled, so when you, um, if you, you know, rent our venue, you'll be in safe hands. You know, if there's somebody who knows the ropes and keeps everything calm and smoothly moving. And um, PR support, social media support, and marketing. We do have uh, several packages for that, but we also do other things to support your show. We'll have a section on our website just for the fringe shows that come on, on board for the New American. We have a place in our lobby for your cards. And uh, we also offer social media support. Next. Uh, very similar to everyone else, we, uh, we do have stage managers that you're required to use through our venue. Um, we have one person for the booth and one person for backstage to help facilitate uh, the show as it's happening and also to help with the transition between shows. Um, we did that last year and it worked out really well. Um, and of course there's, a, there's an extra fee associated with that. Um, every show that books with us gets two hours of tech time included with discounted rehearsal rates available afterwards. Um, I mean, all that's pretty standard, I think, at this point. Everyone's kind of doing yeah. similar. We're do, yeah, we're, we already all, mentioned it. We do the twice the time. And, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's it's every every block is two hours, whether you have a one-hour show or a 90-minute show. Um, last year, we had a show that was 45 minutes, and in one block, that is the show twice. So that's... Oh, wow. Yeah, it worked out really well. That's cool. That's, and when I saw that they were a 45-minute show, I, I suggested, why don't you do it twice? And they said, OK. <laughs> it, it went down exactly like that, too, with the hand gesture. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, we do have limited storage. We have our own furniture and props that you're welcome to use. Um, and some of it, if you'd like to take it home afterwards, we're trying to get rid of it. Um, <laughs> and it's, you know, it's, and that's, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Uh, the Hudson includes the house manager, box office person, stage manager, tech operator, valet service, presence on our marquee, storage. Everything's included. No extra cost. What else? Marketing. What else? <laughs> It'll curate. We don't. Um, so, with all of this information, it's like, wow, so much. Um, I want to remind everyone that this is being recorded and will be posted on YouTube. So, if you're like, my hand slips and I can't write any more notes, don't worry. All this information will be there. But we also have this wonderful, wonderful resource, uh, resource called HollywoodFringe.org forward slash venues where you'll be able to also find out a lot of this information as well as our support portal. And uh, basically there's a lot of information out there on the web and I suggest that you use it. But first, does anybody have any questions that they wanted to ask? Try and keep it to something that might be relevant to somebody else in the room as we will have a mixer that you can ask some more direct questions. Um, thanks everyone for your helpful comments. Uh, Matthew mentioned the double level stage at the McCadden. 
Um, I think I've seen one at the Met as well. I'm not sure how permanent that was. Um, if you're wanting to do something like a Romeo and Juliet balcony or an upstairs bedroom scene, um, is the McCann the only option, or does anyone else have a raised stage? Not a rich stage so much, but we do have um, we have two like Punch and Judy peekaboos on the side oh, of our proscenium, which are quite fun and accessible. Anybody else? We have a balcony in our Tory stage. Oh, the Tory stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the blank is participating. Check out the blank. They have a second story. It's a little, it's a shortened one, but I believe, yeah, they have one as well. Thank you so much. You actually have a question. It's answering one of your questions. I'm Harry. I'm with the Hudson Theater. You asked about the show, the venues that have less uh, shows. So one of the, uh, Friends is at a really exciting time with all kinds of, of action-packed theaters. Uh, and the venues that have you know a few shows, if you have something you're like, well, you know, I don't really want to be around that chaos, or I want to have a show that's so loud that I'm afraid I'm going to blow everybody else out of the water, that's where a venue that only has one show going on might have a positive, the negative, all of them, right? Yeah. So I'm a French virgin. Woo! Yeah. because, I mean, yeah, we have 328 seats, but there was a show that wanted to block off the side section so that people just sat in the middle. And it's like, the space might speak to you. It might be, it is very intimate despite having that. That's a possibility. You can sell 328 seats. If you really want to, we can have eight <laughs> folding chairs. <laughs> but that doesn't, that doesn't mean that your show has to sell 328 seats every show you do. 
you could sell 40 seats and we can block off like side sections if it makes you feel better. But ultimately, whatever you feel in the space is what you should do. And, and, and we do communicate, like there are times where I have someone, I'm like, listen, you should really check out this venue. It sounds like it might be suited better yeah, to you. Push each other. I mean, we will absolutely mm -hmm. send people to each other and, and, and communicate. So whatever you feel, I'd say go look at some venues. I would just add to, we've all been saying five is kind of normal. I have seen people do three shows and have a tremendously successful frame. And if there's, like you need a bigger stage and you're worried about the audience, and maybe doing fewer shows and booking a 70 or 80 is the way you kind of work it out. But it, it is what you're comfortable with and what ultimately when you see the space you know. I think with a solo show also, well for any show, but if it's a solo show and you're looking at the audience or you're there, picking your venue depends on how you feel standing there and relating directly to the audience. And so it's a very personal thing picking the venue for your particular production. Um, a new American theater has 37 fixed seats that can go up to 44 or something like that. Um, so some of the spaces like ours are adjustable in that way. So mm -hmm. let's say you sold out 30 seats one night, and then the next night you've got more people coming. That's possible. So it is a very personal choice. Um, but so that is why you need to take it for people. It is yes. better to be sold out. And on the fringe side of this too, I want to remind everyone that we're going to have four total workshops and four total town halls, and they're going to cover all of these subjects, including how to get butts and seats, how to sell tickets, how to register, all of these different components. And if you want to be like extra, extra prepared, super researcher, they're all online from last year. So if you're right now like sitting here like, I'm super confused, and I want to figure out, and I want to be ahead of the game, and I want to know all of these details, like we have an entire uh, workshop on how to tech your fringe now. We have an entire one about money and promotion, an entire one about um, selling tickets, things like these. And they're all on Fringe TV, so you can go ahead and look there for more best practices. Again, they're suggestions, not requirements. Uh, this is kind of out of left field, perhaps. Thank you all for sharing all the information on your beautiful indoor venues. I'm curious if anyone has done shows outside in Fringe. Yes. And where is a good place to look? And if anyone knows if you have to go through uh, LA City Parks, gonna, anything like that. I'm gonna say that that would be a best conversation to have via support. There okay. are there are shows that have set like best practices for that. Yeah. So um, if you have any shows that were fringe shows in mind, like Hamlet Mobile or other outdoor performances, you might want to check them out, see what they did, and then email support and be like, "This is my idea that mirrors that." And okay. All of the guidelines will be set. There was a show a couple of years ago that was one of the. There was a. Everyone talked about it. It was an imaginary baseball game. Yeah. yeah. That's and and it was one of the. It was one of the best things in Friends that year. And yeah. it was literally they, they took over the uh, the baseball field in the corner of uh, Huenga and Santa Monica. Yeah. And played an imaginary game. Yeah. So I, I, I have no idea how they did that. But, um, I, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it's totally ball. possible. Yeah. That exactly. was so funny. The answer is it's totally totally yeah. possible. Oh, so but great. maybe um, it would be better to discuss about exactly. I've I always wanted to use our back parking lot for a performance oh, space, so great. Okay. We'll, we'll figure it out. All right. All right. Are there, because I was listening to this, if I'm not a complete dumb beginner, yeah. are there venues that are better suited for that? Like, like listen, the Hudson stuff sounds great, all the Hudson stuff sounds like more do. That's a great question. So, is there, like, do you. I'll just walk you right through it. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. I think going and touring is going to show you how much information each venue is yeah. going to give you. Yeah. And you'll you'll sense right you'll away sense. if they're a, a very, very helpful venue or if they're, you know, a more are looking for more established or, or know what you're doing uh, yeah. renters. Yeah. Yeah. So you just go, it's, it's the same principle, go tour, see what fits your show, and then also see what venue and personal, venue personality fits you yeah. and your show. Yeah. I'm going to ask the middle there to ask my question so that we have enough time to answer them all. Okay. Hello. Um, I'm also brand new. Yay. Um, Yay. I was wondering, I'm trying to edit down my show right now, and I'm kind of worried about, like, time, because I know that I don't want to, and right now it's, like, over 90 minutes. <laughs> Let's just say that. Um, so our... Um, are you accommodating to that? Are any venues accommodating to like shows that run longer than the 90 minutes? Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
started. And all of these, like, there have been successful shows that have been 90 minutes. And have sure. gone on oh, to yeah. really, really, like, incredible things afterwards. Or have been less than that. 15 minute shows have done well. I think it's just that there's a there's some shows with, like, kind of average is about 45 to 55. I'd oh. say 60 is what you see the most stuff. The only problem we have with 90 is then you start getting into intermission. And yeah. that can be kind of tough waters to navigate to keep things on time. But you should check with the ones that raise their hands. Yeah, we can yeah. accommodate. Yeah. Additionally, it gets to be hard for fringe goers to, to figure out scheduling. Yeah. If you're trying to see that one show that's 90 minutes when everything else is an hour. Yeah. So that, that's the that's where you might start looking into you know alternate times so that, that you can accommodate audiences without running their schedule too much in the budget. I found that 90 is fine, two hours is a little tougher. It's tough. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. Actually, it's possible. Two hours is tougher even if you're not doing a French show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In Los Angeles, isn't it? That's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. true. I also think that if you keep yeah. it at 60 minutes mm -hmm. or less, people are willing to try it. Mm -hmm. If they have no clue and yeah. the, the, yeah. the log yeah. line looks yeah. good, they'll, they'll come out and they'll say, oh, what the heck, or I'm here anyway. But once it's an hour and a half, it's like, because then the price That's is a little good. higher too. I would encourage it just because it's six months out or five months out. We have this, well, I guess a little left, but it's, we have, you've got time. And I think if you're just working on it, if it's something you're you're writing yourself. I'm adapting. Something. You're adapting. So I just love it so much that I'm having a hard time cutting it. Yeah. Down. I think that the bare bones. It's, it's been my experience that the more you work on it, the more, especially if you're showing it to people to kind of test it out. Um, a director mm -hmm. or, or people that you trust to watch it, that you'll find that uh, you'll start to cut away the fat, as they say, and get to the bone of the matter. And then when you've got it to the point where you want it, that's the that's the link that should be. It, I don't think you should worry about parameters. I think it should be about what's best for your show. I'm going to take this one last question, but then don't worry. We're going to be here having a mixer, and you can ask all of us questions directly. Okay. Um, sure, I'm going to make some announcements okay. too. Okay, good. That's why I can Yeah. Um, hi, I'm also really new. Uh, my question is do you all wait like for the complex to schedule your shows until the end of March, or do you schedule as you go? Uh, we schedule as we go in order of uh, contracts. Okay, so we, we schedule March. Is yeah. that, oh, okay. okay. It depends on the menu. But okay. there's no bad time slots in Fringe, is what I would like to say. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't believe there are any bad time slots. I'm you, firmly You just about. need to know your, you, <laughs> you should know who you're appealing to. If it's mostly senior citizens, then make sure you get the, you know, afternoon heavy or early evening. If you're if you're if you're going for a late night crowd, then make sure you get those dates. And mm -hmm. I think everybody gives a really fair mix of that and tries to do the best they can to find the, the time slots that'll work the best for you. Another reason why we schedule late is because so many shows are not cast at the time that they sign the contract, and all of a sudden you're locked into a date, and you have an actor who you love, but you can't do that date. Mm -hmm. If it's in March, you know, then if you cast and you then come to us and say, you know, I know it's not the contract, can we add this other conflict in? Or can we open up, you know, you definitely have to have that weekend, that date, because that's when this act is available. So it gives you more flexibility there. Cool. So right before I make a bunch more fringe announcements, I kind of want to go down and ask if you guys have any um, office hours that people can come, drop by and see your venues, if you have any tours coming up, or how they can contact you, or any last minute announcements for me. I'll do that. All right, go ahead. Uh, email us and uh, you can set up a tour. We're pretty flexible to getting someone over there to show you the space. Uh, yeah, if you reach out to our venue through the Fringe website, Assistance League Theater, um, I will arrange, typically like through the week, business hours, I'm, I can arrange to be there. But if you can only be there at 7 o'clock on a Tuesday, then I'll make it work. Uh, anytime we're open, we'll have someone on site that could give you a tour. Um, we ask that you just let us know. I mean, you could walk up, that's totally fine, but it's easier if you let us know uh, and we work out a time just to make sure that the spaces are available because if you show up and all, all four spaces are being used, it's a little, you know, we can sneak around, but it's a little harder to kick the tires on the space. So uh, you just, the, our rentals at the broadwaterla.com uh, and we'll work out a time that, that um, we 
locations and spaces and we'll show you that. Uh, just email us either through the site or you can go to our website, which is stagecraftsllc.com, crafts like arts and crafts. Um, and I have cards, which has the email address on there as well. Uh, we are generally by appointment only, but then we do have a uh, open house coming up next Saturday. This is Saturday. the 26th. 26th. Uh, 26th, and it's going to be right after the town hall. So go over to the lounge, go to the town hall, and then from 5 to 8, we will be over at Studio Stage just having an open house. So stop on by. Uh, we, during the week, it's all. Almost always appointment only, and then we have a couple open houses throughout the year. We are actually hosting this weekend's uh, a workshop town hall. Or yeah, town hall. Town hall. Um, yeah, town hall. So it's from 2 to 5 at our venue. Uh, I'll be there from 11 a.m. this Saturday until we start the, the, the shindig, and we'll be showing both spaces. Um, other than that, just email us, and we'll set up a good time by appointment. I like to do by appointment because I don't like to overlap tours. Because I do find fringe tours, you, you have a lot of questions. It really takes 30 minutes to like an hour per person, per show, just so that you can get all your questions out and I can really answer all of them. Uh, at the Complex Hollywood, we are doing um, basically open houses, tours every Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesdays are from 3 to 6, Thursday are from 1 to 3. Uh, I do send that out um, in an email, that information to you if you contact us through the fringe site or directly at um, complexhollywood at gmail.com. And I do have cards I could give you. Um, <clears throat> we, can, uh, we can do a tour any other time as well. Usually evenings are a little difficult. We are a very busy space. So we have a lot of um, regular uh, clients there in the evenings from six on. But if Tuesday and Thursday aren't good for me, just email me, give me a call. We'll work out a time that does work for y'all. Come down on the weekend to meet you. It's fine. Um, we're going to do an open house also this Saturday before um, the town hall, 12 to 2, um, at the complex. And it's just a couple of blocks away, so you can take a walk. Um, you may not be able to see every space. Like I said, we're very busy. But we do have regular shows running right now. We have three shows in four of the stages. Um, they're all ready Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I always think, you know, take a tour, but also if you really want to see what it looks like, it's your show. Go enjoy some theater. Yeah, I like that. I thought that's good. So we also have tours. Uh, right now they're scheduled Thursdays from two to four, and Saturdays from four to six. This Saturday we're doing. We're not going to have one because of the open house. Um, please make an appointment. Just email, call. Uh, due to the nature of eight different spaces, it is hard to get them all available at the same time. So doing the two words when I have them planned out, I try to make that happen. But please check. Don't just show up just to make sure the space you really want to see is going to be available. Um, and then I'd like to make a big announcement. Can I do that now? Oh, I'll do it fast, do it fast. Okay. So one of the other things I do is I'm executive producer of the Encores, which is the best of Hollywood Fringe that runs in July. Each participating venue picks shows to continue for one or two more shows. Um, starting last year, I partnered up with the New York City Fringe Encores, and Darren and Cole, Cole from the Soho Playhouse came out, spent about two weeks seeing shows, and between Fringe and then a subsequent showcase I set up in September, he picked four shows from the Hollywood Fringe, invited them to the Soho Playhouse to perform in the 260 seat house. Um, they just had that in November, December, and he has announced that one of the shows will be picked up for a six to eight week run in the Soho Playhouse this year. And I'm very excited to announce for the first time that Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which was over at the LGBTQ Center, did get selected and is gonna be heading to New York. In addition, he was he, his quote was, Hollywood is hot, was his quote. He is also bringing back The Day I Became Black, which was over at the Broadwater. Um, and then there are two more that have not been publicly announced, but let's just say that New York is in the house with the Hollywood fringe and is going out and seeing shows. So have nice, exciting. And yeah, he's picking shows, just so you know, thank you. He's picking shows from seven different fringe festivals, from Cape Town to Australia, to Edinburgh, to New York City. 
out of all of those festivals, he picked four out of the 16 shows were from Hollywood. So he is jazzed on Hollywood, guys. <laughs> so that's my exciting news. That's that's that is cool. cool. That's <laughs> that's cool. cool. We're hot. Um, okay. No. <laughs> and more. And back to it. Okay, back to the reality. Um, no, uh, we're open uh, every day of the week, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. I'm a full staff all the time. And uh, we do our tours from 11 a.m. till 5 p.m. Uh, it is by appointment because we are very busy all the time. And I want to make sure that it's not interfering with something else that we can give you full attention. So um, we're open. We have lots of tours that we do all the time. And uh, just reach out to us at info at theactorscompanyla.com. And we also have on our website, which is theactorscompanyla.com, our fringe brochure, which you can download directly there, or you can email us and we can send it out to you. Uh, the New American Theater, you can go online, newamericantheater.com, and um, find my email, jeanine at newamericantheater.com, and we'll set up an appointment for you to come and take a tour. Um, we are busy uh, on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evenings um, uh, with you know ongoing ongoing things. So and shows that are happening all the time. So it is very important to make a, a reservation or an appointment. Uh, we are generally there, however, every Saturday um, it's around 1 o'clock. So, so keep that in mind when you email me. Uh, to view the LGBT Center, it's through appointment. Uh, we're closed to the public until 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Uh, but email me, make an appointment. I can give you a tour of the space. Um, I brought one sheet if anybody's interested in more information, and I also have business cards with all the info on it. So I'm happy to give those out to anybody who wants one. I made lots of copies. <laughs> yeah, at the Hudson uh, appointment, we have staff on site, but appointment certainly is a good idea. Um, and to the gentleman who said the Hudson sounds great, but it sounds like you need to know what you're doing. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, part of the reason we don't, we don't do so many shows is because we want to make sure that people who need the consulting and the guidance and the extra time have it. And, uh, and, and that's why we include all the staff and everything, too, so you don't have to worry about all this extra stuff. You really don't need to know what you're doing. I mean, maybe when you're up on stage. <laughs> but outside of that, we're here to help. Cool. One other quick thing, not related to that particular thing, um, especially for everyone who's a new producer, uh, there's a Facebook group called, uh, it's just the Hollywood Fringe and LA Theater, um, and it's really great. Uh, I, I manage it with Greg, but all of us are like in there and helping out and stuff like that. It'll be very, very active during Fringe, but it is active all year, so if you want to join that, please answer the questions because we want to keep box out. So uh, it's just Hollywood Fringe and LA Theater. So go join that. Even if you just say, I was at the panel tonight, I'll let you in. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Woo! All right, so. I have one very quick question. Who has a piano? Oh, here. Piano. Oh, piano. Oh, piano. Oh, piano. Oh, piano. Oh, and guess what? We're all going to be sitting yeah, here and having a drink, so you can ask us all of these awesome questions. I want to make some Fringe announcements as everybody's gathering their stuff. Uh, first of all, this is only a smattering of our venues. We have all the rest of our venues that are participating currently. So my dad, who knows, forward slash venues, hollywoodfringe.org forward slash venues. You can search by seat number. You can find out so much information there. Also by looking at our support portal, which is support.hollywoodfringe.org. You're going to have all of these burning beginning of the fringe questions answered. Um, thank you so much to our staff for coming. We have Alex in the back, we've got Tina, I see, oh, and Jay. Uh, I have two volunteers over there that I've been like really good for us. Finally, Art, thank you for hosting this, host the mixer. Uh, we have our show all next Saturday, January 26th at the lounge from 2 to 4 p.m. Woo! where we'll be answering all the questions about oh. registration, a mixer afterwards, um, which is our off-season off office hours at the Broadwater Plunge. From four to seven, there's also all these tours going on, so you can go get a tour, go have a drink, then go for another tour, come hang out with us all day. Um, our fringe bed wraps close February 1st for all participants who have participated in the past who want to give back to the fringe. Um, registration starts February 1st. You have to register by April 1st to be in our guide, which you'll get tons of information about in the next two months. Have you registered for our email list? 
That's how you're going to get all of these announcements and more because I'm rambling really fast and you probably want to see them in writing. You need to sign up for our email list. It's on, you can sign up on our website. If you have signed up and you're like, I don't see them, check your promotions folder. That was a hot tip from one of our printers last year. Make sure that if you don't see them, that you should be seeing them and you can add them to your contact list. That way you see them every time. Uh, and I think that's it. I'll have coffee and cookies on Saturday. Yeah. If you want to come. Oh, nice. Oh, I see how you're working. Yeah.